All right, hopefully the generator out in front of my house isn't too much of a distraction to the audio. Um, welcome back to another episode of Catching Colorado. Today we're going to do something a little different. Um, I have been working on my outboard, which is a 200 horsepower Yamaha VMAX. And as most of you know that have been watching the channel, I've rebuilt this thing two times. Um, the second time right, the first time was just kind of a patch job. Either way, Ox 66 motors, very, very popular motors. Um, they run great. They're two strokes. They're super strong. A lot of boats have them from back in the day. Uh, this particular one is a 99. Um, but the motors are awesome. They just have kind of one fatal flaw. Um, they eat through lift pumps or low pressure fuel pumps. Um, basically, I'll explain in detail kind of how it all works in a minute. Um, but uh, the fuel is pulled through the bulb that you squeeze and pushed into the onboard fuel filter, which is in the engine. And then from there, it is pulled up to the VST tank through what they call a lift pump or a low pressure fuel pump. Um, how the system operates is each pump has a diaphragm in them and there's a vacuum port behind each pump and it kind of sucks that diaphragm and then that diaphragm moves in and out to push the fuel upwards. And there's three of these. What happens is, is when they leak, when those diaphragms fail, gas and fuel is leaked right into the engine, uh, right into those little vacuum holes um, and then you can get locked up, uh, kind of a flood condition uh, for your motor. So. Usually it happens when you sit for long periods, it's really hot out. Um, that's when these things tend to exhibit a little bit more of those symptoms. It can be hard starting, it can be really smoky. Uh, the only fix for them is to replace those pumps and they're $40 a piece and you have three of them and usually more than one go at a time. Um, I have replaced probably 10 of these pumps in the last two years and I'm done. So there is a replacement uh, kind of modification that you can do to bring the fuel right up to the VST tank um, and bypass using those vacuum ports um, so you kind of eliminate the flood condition and you completely eliminate using any lift pumps. So my goal is to replace that on my boat. Um, there is not a video that I found of this being done. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of walk you through the steps and we'll just go through it and see if we can uh, resolve this issue and hopefully be done with lift pumps forever. So let's head into the cowling and uh, take a look in the engine and see if we can talk a little bit about what we're gonna do uh, to remove the system first. All right, so now we are over at the engine. This is the VST tank. This is what takes your fuel and puts it through these two lines that go into your fuel rail and feed the engine. This right here is where the fuel comes into the VST tank and it does that through a series of these lift pumps. So I've got one, two, three. And you'll notice I put dates on these things just so that I understand when um, they were replaced. And so I've got some that are a little older that I replaced diaphragms on and then some that are brand new pumps. But um, this is the bottom pump this is where it all starts, and then it continues to lift up to the top and then gets dumped right in there to the VST tank. Right here is the onboard fuel filter. So this is where the actual fuel from outside of the boat from the fuel tank comes to. It processes through this fuel filter and then it gets shot into those lift pumps. So the idea is that we wanna remove these lift pumps and get them out of the equation. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to uh, remove both of these screws right here, these 10 mils from each pump. The other three just hold the plate on. So I'm gonna remove those two screws on each pump and I'm gonna pull those off and then we'll talk a little bit further. All right, one thing I wanna talk about before I go too far. If you just loosen these two screws and you don't pull them out and this thing is just kind of loose on the actual motor so you can wiggle it, and then you go to squeeze your bulb on the fuel line. What will happen is you'll see gas leaking out of these. 
and whichever one's leaking gas is your faulty fuel pump. So that's how you tell which ones are bad. Um, that's how you know you you kind of exhibit all of these problems is through having faulty um, diaphragms in there. So if you loosen these up just so that you can see them, you don't even have to take these bolts out, but just loosen them up so that they wiggle a little bit, and then you press that fuel fuel bulb on your fuel line right there, you'll see the gas leaking out of these. I'm not gonna do it now just because I'm on my, my nice garage floor. Um, also, this 10 mil right here is pretty hard to get to. So I use a uh, ratcheting 10 mil box wrench. All right, I got all three pumps free now. So I'm just gonna start cutting uh, these zip ties off that I have holding the fuel line on. Uh, this is the, the one that we're gonna be replacing on the VST tank. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and chop that. Um, you might have some other sort of uh, clip system. I use zip ties for just about everything uh, when it comes to these because they're so cheap and very easy to replace and they usually do a pretty good job of holding them. But um, let me start disconnecting this. Basically that's the first spot and then the second spot is right off of the uh, outlet of the fuel filter. And then you should be able to take that whole thing out uh, without having any problem. All right, it looks like my VST tank is blocking me. So I'm just gonna loosen a couple screws so I can get it out. It's been a while since I've taken these out. Just three screws on this, two on the top, one on bottom. I'm just gonna remove the bottom and one of the top and see if I can just rock it out of the way. There's the whole lift pump system removed. All right, so now if we just look in here, you'll see there's actually um, gaskets. And that little hole right here, that little hole is where the vacuum comes from for these pumps. So you can see, I mean, the gaskets look brand new, but that's what's causing us all of our issues. So we basically want to um, cover these holes. We're removing the lift pumps, they won't be here anymore. So we're gonna cover these holes with a plate and I'll show you what I've got for that. So the plates that I'm gonna to use to cover the holes, uh, they come from Speed Doctor Racing Components and they will send them to you. Basically just like a thick plate that just covers those holes. So I'm going to put these in each of those three slots on the motor. This prevents any of that uh, vacuum uh, from escaping and just keeps the, the motor running as it should. They also come with these gaskets. Now the important thing about these gaskets is they don't have the hole, so they provide a good seal. So you need these gaskets, the ones without the hole, in order to close that vacuum port and make sure you don't have any issues. So I've got three of these, three plates, and then I've got all the bolts for them. I believe I paid 35 bucks. Um, great deal for a lifetime of never having to deal with these things again. Um, the heads of these are Allen wrenches, so make sure you have an Allen wrench. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my lift pump plate, or my vacuum port plate, I'm gonna take my gasket and a bolt, and I'm going to bolt this up to each of the three locations. So now I've got one plate, two plates, three plates installed. So that part is done, now, we're never touching lift pumps again. We need to figure out how to get the fuel from this port on the exit of the inline fuel filter up here to the VST. And we are gonna do that with the power of an electric pump. Um, but for everything we need to know at this moment, uh, we just need to get a line from here to the top of the VST. So I'm gonna connect to that now so that we don't forget, we don't have any fuel issues uh, down the road um, and then after we get that line connected uh, we'll zip back down our VST tank. So that is your completed fuel system mod 
for the inside of the motor. Um, and then we have some electrical work we have to do too. But we have our supply line going into the VST tank. I've made really wide bends here so that nothing gets pinched and path of least resistance, right? We want a very short lead to the, the uh, VST tank. So then I've got um, that other end going here. That's the outlet of the filter. And then this is the inlet. So gas is gonna get pushed by the pump into the filter. Then it's gonna get pushed up this line and brought right into the VST tank. So I didn't make this too long or too squirrely, just enough so that it's not gonna kink. And then we have our three plates installed. Now we've completely removed that part of the fuel system for the lift pumps, and now we're on to doing electrical, which we're gonna play around with these wires up here, I'll talk about in just a minute. Okay, so the next step in the process after you've done the conversion of the fuel system um, is we are, we are moving this system from a mechanical system where uh, actual physical diaphragm is pushing in and out to, to push uh, the fuel up to a electric system. Um, so we have to tap into the motor somewhere so that uh, when the motor is on, that fuel pump will continuously support fuel into the VST tank. And there's no better way to do that than to use the existing lines from the high pressure fuel pump, which is inside of the VST tank. So there's two lines right on top, one's positive, one's negative, and we need to connect a trigger wire to them. This is not gonna power the pump, this is just gonna tell a relay to switch on and we will power the pump from the battery. Um, the VST system, I'm not sure how much current is built into it, but we wanna be able to give the uh, relay a trigger, but we don't wanna power it completely off the VST. Um, so that's why we're using a relay. So we are going to use these two wires um, I've got just little circle, uh, circle butt ends on them. I forget what they're called. Um, terminal connectors, I think. Um, I'll let you guys see those there. And I'm gonna put these on each post of the top of the VST. And then we have a little bulk here. So we're gonna have to trim down the plastic um, that kind of covers those connectors just so that these wires can sneak out. Um, I chose to do a solid copper wire in a sheathing. I think this will be easier to run um, because this does need to run out of your motor and into the back of the boat. So I've left it on the spool for now. I'm not sure how much I'll need, um, but I'm just gonna end up connecting these to the top of the motor. So let's go do that now. All right, so I have my wires here. And what we're looking at is just right here on top of the VST tank. And the way that I understand this is that this one on the right this is your negative battery spot. And the one on the left, which is the red, is your positive, which makes sense, right? Red is usually positive. So I'm going to hook up red to red, and then I have a white wire here, and that white is gonna to go to my blue. This little plastic piece is just a cover, and we're gonna to have to trim that up just a little bit so that we can snake out that cable uh, once it's connected, but for now, uh, let's get it hooked up. Okay, the small hiccup in my plan is that um, the post that I was going to put the positive on is kind of broken on my VST tank. It's not, I can't get the bolt off without ruining things. So I'm going to have to tap into the red wire. Now, please, please, please avoid this at all costs if you can. Um, but if you do it, just know what you're doing. You need a very solid connection. Um, now I'm going to do this at the bottom of the pigtails because these can always be unplugged and repurchased. The harness, the wiring harness for your whole motor is a huge pain in the butt. So make sure it is on this side of these if you absolutely have to, but I would really highly recommend you don't do this. Okay, for better or for worse, there's the negative. I was able to just clip out a little section so that this plastic piece could just kind of come down over the top. Again, my positive one is, is a little broken, so I had to tap in um, to the red. I would recommend taking your time and finding a pigtail that you can use, just like this pigtail here, and splitting it off 
so that you can just unplug and reconnect. But obviously, uh, I'm in haste uh, and I should have taken more time, but I just ended up splicing it. So again, I don't recommend splicing it. You're adding resistance and other things into the system that you don't need, but I'm gonna do it because I know it'll work as long as it's spliced correctly. Um, so now I just have my wire connected to this long lead and that is gonna have to get run right into this engine bay here. Um, so my next task will be running this into the engine bay as well as I'm gonna run a brand new fuel line. So I'm gonna get rid of all these splits in here. I'm also going to get rid of my ball. You don't need it with this system. So I'm going to run this line all the way right back to the Carter pump. Um, so in here, we are technically done with all the modifications, minus just hooking up the new fuel line. We have our three plates, we have our VST reinstalled, we have tapped the red wire, and then we have connected to ground again. These two are not powering our pump. They are just giving the relay the signal to turn on, and then we'll power the pump from the battery. Okay, so now that we have gotten the on motor stuff mostly taken care of minus the new fuel cable, now what I'm going to work on is assembling the electrical to the relay from the battery. So uh, one more time, we want to give the pump power, but we don't want that power to come from our engine or our VST tank signal or anything else. Um, I have no idea if it would work even if you tried, but um, I think that in the end, you wanna protect the motor and the connections. And so the best thing to do is to use a relay. The relay takes a very, very low amount of uh, energy to signal. And then once it's on, uh, it uses power from a completely different source. Right now I'm unraveling a 10 gauge cable. You could use eight, I think it's overkill. Um, this pump's gonna do its job with 10 gauge, even 12 gauge, it would probably still, still work just fine. Um, so I'm going to wire up two connections. Uh, one is gonna go to the battery power. One is gonna be a negative terminal uh, to the battery negative. And this is going to get routed right into that same box that we just um, were pointing out that the wires from the motor need to go to. So I do all of my wiring kind of off site, get it all set up. And then when I'm ready to start running it, I leave one end free so that I can fish the wire through. So that's gonna be the goal um, and we're gonna get started. I have my positive and I have my negative. I've got them shrink wrapped and I also put red and black tape on them so I know for sure what they are. The middles are both the same color because um, I only have one eight gauge. And then at the pigtail at the end, I have just denoted which one is positive with, man, if I can get a hold of it here, a little red tag. So I'm gonna hook these up to the battery and then I'm gonna pull them through and then they'll be in that uh, compartment and then we're just gonna leave them extra long until we get all of the pump stuff hooked up and then we know exactly where these are running to. Um, so that is how this all is gonna get hooked up. This is going to feed the pump. Again, signal wire from the boat engine and then this from the battery to feed the pump power. Okay, so I took a little time off camera to mount the pump in the splash well in the back of the stern here on the boat. Um, so all I've done is mount that pump. Um, I ran two lines, again, electrical from the battery, positive and negative, right back to the pump. And now I'm going to route a new fuel line and the wiring that we connected and tapped into the VST tank. We're gonna run that all to the pump as well. Once I get everything run, I'll show you exactly how to hook it up. Okay, so over here on the right, we have the inlet pipe that is three quarters. And then over here on the left, we have the outlet pipe and that is five sixteenths. There's the pump. There's our two pigtails we haven't hooked up yet. And then if I flip this thing around, just looking the other way, you'll see right here is my filter. So I've got a couple lines hooked up to that. One is coming from the fuel tank. That is the one uh, that's going straight down. And then the other one is going to my kicker motor. So the one on the back side is what's feeding the actual pump. 
and is going to feed my main engine. So that is the filter. I have this set up that the fuel goes into the 10 micron, which is also a water separator, and then it goes into the pump, and then the pump carries it all the way up to the engine to the onboard filter. So that is basically the entire connection for the fuel line. And now we are just worried about hooking up the electrical and the relay, which I'm gonna show you next. All right, so we've got all the plumbing done. Now it's time to wire in our relay here. We are wiring in a five pin relay. You see that there? You can wire in a four pin if you want. Um, five pin was cheapest at my store and I was able to find it. This is a 30 amp relay. And I'm gonna put up on the screen the wiring diagram for this so that you know exactly what goes where. I would say the biggest thing is when I was researching this, the 86 and the 85 pin were really contradictory. A lot of people said you wire ground to 86, you wire ground to 85. Which one's the ground coming off the VST tank? On any five pin relay, 85 is the ground, not 86. So if you're using a five pin, 85 is the ground. With a four pin, they can be swapped, but I would still recommend just for your, your future knowledge, 85 is always the ground pin. Um, so 85 is gonna be our ground and 86 will be our positive. Um, so that's how we're gonna hook this up. Again, I've got the uh, little diagram for you there and uh, we're gonna get everything connected. So I've chosen to mount everything kind of in this uh, upper compartment. The splash well is just off to the left. I've ran all of the wiring into this upper compartment and I'm gonna place my relay in here as well. Reason being is electrical and fuel don't really mix too well. Uh, so ideally, I wanna keep my electrical a little bit further away from the fuel. If there was ever a fuel leak or something leaked on this, um, that's gonna cause you major issues and potentially a fire. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kinda keep my electrical a little bit away from that fuel compartment. Um, so mostly all of that is gonna be fuel and water. There's still connectors running through there, but after I use um, any form of heat shrink, uh, and then the connectors that I'll be using, it will be pretty much a uh, completely sealed system. So um, just eliminating these open prongs and, and other things that could potentially cause issues. All right, so the first wire that I'm gonna hook up is this red wire. This is our positive off of the VST. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crimp that down and secure it. Make sure we have a nice tight grab there, we do. And then I'm gonna do the same thing All right, so we got our 10 gauge connector coming off the battery here. So we are gonna put our spade connector on and then we are going to crimp that down. There we go, like so. And then we're gonna hook it to this bottom pin here. You'll notice you have three going the same way. This bottom pin is number 30. That's where your positive from the battery goes. So we've got the positive now hooked up and now we can hook up the other connections. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm extending the wiring for the pump down here and bringing it into this uh, little access compartment here instead of keeping the wiring in the splash well. So the positive connector for the pump is gonna go directly above the input from the battery. So this one is gonna be a vertical and this one's gonna be a horizontal. So we're gonna hook this up to that horizontal port. And that is how the pump is gonna get power now these two prongs on the outside are the switched power, and that's gonna tell when this relay will turn on, positive and ground. The middle pin we're not gonna use. So sometimes in the middle of these things where you're not using a connector, I don't like anything touching that. So I'm gonna take a regular connector here, and I'm just gonna slide it down and over that middle pin, and I'll push it all the way in, and once it's all the way in, I'm just gonna take the top here, and I'm just gonna snip it and that's just gonna provide a little bit of protection from other pins accidentally touching that. And then I can heat shrink this back over the top and it will shrink down and cover that little metal exposure. So just a safer way to, to hold your pins in there and uh, a lot cleaner too. So now what we wanna do is we wanna hook up the red wire from the VST tank to the trigger on the relay. So looking at it in the same orientation we have been, it is this pin on the left, that is number 86. 86 is our positive and 85 is our ground. 
You can look on all of these and they'll have a number on them so that you can see for sure. But 86 is our positive. So we're gonna take that positive and we're gonna clip it on there. So now all we have left is ground. So we've finally finished up all of the wiring uh, for the boat. Um, we have the low pressure fuel pump all hooked up and we made a couple modifications to the um, electrical. And I just wanna speak to those really quick. Online, I couldn't find any detail about exactly how the ground connections were hooked up. What I found through my research is that in the motor, the VST tank works off of a ground connection. So the high pressure pump turns on after it's been grounded for five seconds and that ground is lifted. Um, so therefore, by wiring the ground from the VST with the other grounds, it stayed constantly grounded and kept the pump running. So uh, after a little bit of modification, what I've done is I've just taken the ground from the motor, from the VST, and run that to the ground pin on the relay. And then what I've done with the other two grounds, the one from the battery and the one from the pump, is just connected those directly. And that seems to have solved all the issue. So uh, now the pump only runs for five seconds when the key's turned on, and I'll show you that now. Here's just an up close of the relay. Again, the top is the power to the pump. The bottom is the power from the battery. The left is the red wire from the VST, and the right is just the blue wire from the VST. And then separately, Right here, we have connected the battery to the pump ground. There's my pump and my connections made. And now I'm going to turn the key and you'll hear that pump run for five seconds. So as you can see, the pump only ran for five seconds. Now I'm gonna take my hose and I'm gonna connect the hose to the hose bib on the motor and we're gonna start it up and see how the low pressure pump works. Stick your hand in here and just verify that the pump is running which it is, I feel it running. So that part's good. And the engine right now is just idling, just making sure that it, that fuel is enough to keep up in that high pressure pump so the low pressure is fuel, feeding it enough. And then just checking everything for leaks and making sure there's no leaks going on. I'm gonna continually run this until the motor drops down in RPM. Usually it takes a few minutes for it to warm up and then it'll drop down in RPM. Right now we're about 1200, we want it to go down to about 700. And then we know that enough fuel has been run through it to not only keep it warm, but uh, it just shows us that the fuel pump can keep up. We can tell right here that the fuel level is not dropping inside of the onboard fuel filter, which means that it is getting enough fuel to keep up and to supply that VST tank. So at this point, I would say we are complete in the changeover and feeling pretty good about uh, where we're at as far as this low pressure fuel pump's concerned. No leaks, everything's working correctly. Should be all good to shut her down. All right, so at this point, that completes the entire assembly of the low pressure fuel pump. Um, we're completely done now. So this motor does not need any more lift pumps. Um, it should run just fine off of this. Again, make sure you have solid electrical connections. Try to keep the electrical away from the fuel. And then after you've run your motor, check a little bit after for any fuel issues. Um, do you have any leaks anywhere? Does every uh, zip tie you've put on hold? Um, and do you need to add an extra clamp here or there? So um, right now, I think we're ready to water test this motor. I'm just gonna let the water uh, finally drain out of it and then we'll get it to the lake and we'll give it a try. But uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments below. Hopefully this video helped you do the conversion on your Ox 66 and we'll see you in the next video on Catching Colorado. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more relatable content, you can check out these videos right here. 
Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe down below so you can stay updated on our next adventures.